This is a 15-minute presentation suitable for general audiences. Ganelux Lighting Systems is a family-owned company, been in business for 30 years, and is in Southern California. We are in the business of linear lighting systems. Our forte is really all about total architectural integration, getting fixtures to become part of the space, but doing it in such a way that does not make things difficult for other parties. For instance, in an application like this, where we've got recessed fixtures coming up the wall and across the ceiling, certainly there are many other manufacturers that are doing this kind of thing. But we're paying very close attention to what's happening in the space so that we can build the fixtures properly. For instance, you might see here that there's a gap between the wall and the ceiling. Well, this was not our idea. This was the architect's idea uh, to convey the concept of the ceiling floating up and down on rails of light. It doesn't really move, but that's the com concept that they wanted to convey. So normally we would use a recessed fixture up inside the ceiling, but recessed fixtures are not very attractive on the sides. And the problem is the side of the fixture will be visible as people are walking down the corridor and they look inside the three-inch gap. So rather than using a recessed fixture here, what we did is take a suspended fixture and we modified it so that it could be recessed. And the suspended fixture has smooth sides on it. So now as a person is walking down the corridor, rather than seeing the grooves and flanges and brackets on the side of a recessed fixture, they're looking at the smooth side of a suspended fixture. So we're very much interested in finding out what's happening in the space so that we can build the fixtures appropriately. In an application like this, where there are uh, many fixtures being joined together in a complex pattern, certainly uh, there's a lot of parts and pieces that have to go into something like this, but we don't want the distributor or contractor to order things incorrectly and then potentially have problems at the job site. So what we want to do is simplify the process by actually providing one part number for the entire pattern of fixtures. By doing this, when they order that one part number, they receive all the parts and pieces, all the components that are going to be included as part of that pattern. Now to do that, we work with the designer's original concept and we provide them what we call a development drawing. And this development drawing takes the, all the complexity of that pattern of fixtures and boils it into one part number that is then given uh, to, uh, to the distributors uh, and contractors as part of their, as part of their, uh, their quote so that, uh, so that all the things that are included in that pattern can be ordered with just that one part number. Now, everything that we build is actually fully assembled twice at the factory before we pack it and ship it. First, before it's painted to make sure all the uh, joining mechanisms uh, grab nice and tight with each other and, and making sure that all the angles are correct and all the dimensions uh, are correct. Then we take the whole pattern of fixtures apart then paint it and put in the electrical and reassemble the whole thing on the factory floor to ensure that uh, not, just, uh, not just the aesthetics, but also all of the electrical uh, works the way that it's supposed to. So we're very much into the fine details on how these fixtures are to be built. Now, each component within these fixtures is going to have its own location identifier, which uh, will then help the installing contractor know exactly where everything is supposed to go when they're installing the pattern. Many of our fixtures are recessed into walls or, or into ceilings. And in that case, where you've got a jip wall or jip ceiling, usually people don't want to see that flange that goes around the, the sides of the fixture. So they specify what they call a flangeless fixture. Those flangeless fixtures do have a flange, but it's a mud flange. It's on the outside of the, of, the, of the housing, and it gets mudded over and painted so you can't see it. We have the same thing as well, but we actually have an element that nobody else does, and that is an expansion gap that allows the housing to expand and contract from heat from those lamps, whether they're fluorescent or LED, they create a little bit of heat. And this heats up the housing, which would then expand. So with an expansion gap that we have built in as part of the construction of our fixture, it allows that housing to expand and contract without putting any pressure on the surrounding plaster. And of course, this keeps the plaster from cracking uh, as it surrounds the fixture. So we're very much uh, into uh, the idea of giving people the kind of components that are necessary so that the job will look good dozens of years from now. In an application like this, where we're coming around all four sides of the built environment, you can see that we're going to need exact field dimensions from the installing contractor so that we can build the housings to the proper length. So we do require signature approval from the installing contractor on all those corner-to-corner -corner dimensions. Now, the jip the doesn't have to be up. As long as the studs are up, they'll know what the thickness of the jip is that they're going to use, and this will tell them uh, pretty much what the corner-to-corner uh, -corner dimension would be. 
Once we have those dimensions, that's when we can start cutting our housings. This is not a custom fixture. This is actually a standard four inch wide, four inch tall, direct illumination suspended fixture. And we modified it at the factory for this type of installation where it could be turned on its, uh, well, rotated 90 degrees, if you will, and then uh, attached to the surface of the cement wall in the parking garage at AVA Medical Facility in Seattle to point their customers of where they need to, where they go, need to go park. This is not a custom fixture. This is a standard product that's been simply modified in order to allow for this kind of construction. Now, we do not give the installing contractor all of these miter joints that they have to put together in the field. That's rarely going to work. So what we do instead is we actually give them an L-shaped fixture, like a hockey stick. We give them an L-shaped fixture with a butt joint a few inches away from that miter corner and we weld that miter corner in place at the factory so that by giving the installing contractor a butt joint, it gives them the most simple form of installation possible, and it helps them to, to get the job done quickly and efficiently. All of our fixtures can be built for as individuals or as continuous runs. And when we're building for continuous runs, those fixtures are built specifically for that run. So this allows us to, to fully control all the LED elements or, uh, throughout that uh, run to ensure that we have nice, consistent illumination in all of our runs. To my knowledge, we are the only manufacturer that can make one housing up to 24 feet long in a single piece, and we can do this with all of our products. Now, if for some reason you needed a 24-foot run and you order a 24-foot run, we're not automatically going to make it a 24-foot single piece. This has to be specified that way. But the benefit here is that if you have a tall rectangular housing, which is very strong and rigid, then that entire run of fixtures, that one fixture could be supported with just two cables. So it cleans up the ceiling system, makes things a lot easier for the, uh, for the ordering distributor as well as for the installing contractor. Here's an application where we took a standard suspended product, 12-foot long bidirectional fixture, which dozen manufacturers have. We all have pretty much the same stuff, really. But we took that fixture, we modified it a little bit so that the bottom of, the eight, of an 8-foot portion of that housing could be embedded into the ceiling with the last 4 feet of that very same housing. It's all one piece. The last 4 feet of that housing cantilevered out from the wall to provide bidirectional illumination to the ceiling above. And because of the rigidity of that housing, we did not need a support cable from above. This is not a custom fixture, and it doesn't have the custom dollars associated with it. Here's a residential application, very similar to the previous slide, but on a smaller scale. In this particular case, this is an eight-foot fixture with three feet in the ceiling with our mud flange for a nice integration three feet in the ceiling and five feet out. Now, because there was so much of the fixture uh, coming out of the ceiling, we need the support cable, for, cable from above. But if it was the other way around, maybe five feet in the ceiling and only three feet out, well, in that case, we probably don't need the support cable. So it just depends on what's going on in the space. We'll determine uh, whether we need that support cable or not. Here's a recessed pattern of fixtures. It's a square pattern of fixtures in the ceiling. Here's a wall right here, and you can see the ceiling right here. Now, we've got our mud flange around the outside of the pattern of that fixture to interface with the jip ceiling, and then we have a different flange on the inside of that pattern of fixtures to interface with the grid ceiling. So where a lot of manufacturers have recessed fixtures that can go into grid or go into jip, we can actually make our pattern of fixtures to interface with both. And now what you're doing is you're using that pattern of fixtures as an architectural element to delineate and differentiate those two different ceiling systems. You have to light the space anyway. You've got to put fixtures either on cables or, or, or recess them up into that ceiling. So our position is, let's go ahead and make the fixture to, to create the delineation between the two ceiling systems, thereby creating additional value and cleaning up the entire design of that space and, frankly, making a much more dynamic uh, type of installation. Here's an application where we have an 18-foot single-piece housing, all one piece, where we took a suspended fixture, we modified it so that it could be recessed. You see there are no grooves on the side of that fixture, right? Uh, so this was a suspended fixture that we modified. We have flanges down low to carry the cut tiles here, and then we have flanges up high to carry the cut tiles there, and you can see the reflection of the, the flange at the end of the end cap there. 
Now, the trims that are on the sides of our fixture had to be cut just perfectly to allow this ceiling trim to butt directly up against the side of our fixture at two different locations on the side of our fixture because this trim actually cuts across at an angle. So we're very much into the fine details to allow people to, do, to make very, very dynamic uh, type of installations. And again, this is not a custom fixture. We offer fixtures of multiple widths, and if you'd like to use fixtures of multiple widths, we can actually custom program those drivers in all those fixtures so that you get the same apparent brightness from all of the fixtures. And we do the custom programming of those drivers at no additional cost. Instead of just the flat lens or the, on, on the top or the bottom of the fixture, we also now offer three-dimensional lenses, which drop down a half an inch or rise up a half an inch from the, from the, uh, from the housing itself. So this just provides a different kind of aesthetic in the space and, and a, a more, maybe a more of a modern type of detail. Uh, we also offer the same detail in recessed fixtures as well. In addition to three-dimensional drop lenses, we can actually raise our lens up above the bottom of the housing to create a regressed lens effect. And we can do this in basically any dimension you like. In addition to, uh, to indoor, we can also make fixtures for outdoor uh, capability where we would just give them damp location uh, capability. We, we finish off some of the components inside a little bit differently to give them corrosion resistance. This is outside, of course, in, in a, uh, this is in Seattle, so there's a lot of moisture in the air. So we want to make sure that we don't get a lot of condensation inside those fixtures, damaging the fixtures. So we uh, protect against that by, by making the fixtures suitable for damp location. Wall washing is a very important part of good, light, good lighting design. So uh, we, when we make our wall wash fixture, of course, we give it the capability to run side to side in any, uh, uh, in any dimension so that we have consistency uh, in the space without gaps and, and light leaks and problems. We have a kick reflector on the bottom of the fixture, which actually illuminates all the way to the top of the object wall, so you don't get that harsh shadow at the top of the wall. Also, the kick reflector acts as a glare shield, so the people in the room aren't actually looking inside the fixture. So it's a very nice clean aesthetic. We can make those fixtures as individuals or as continuous runs with fully illuminated corners if you need them. Our perimeter lighting system is, in my opinion, the most well thought out perimeter lighting system on the market. And of course, these are those fixtures that are tucked up inside the ceiling around the perimeter of a space. We offer grazing illumination to shoot light straight down the wall to create shadows on even the most shallow of texture, or ambient illumination to bounce light back out into the space. So you're using the walls as a reflective surface to increase efficiency for those fixtures. The PDF uh, or online brochure of, of, for the perimeter lighting systems uh, has a page where you can actually select any one of these options here by hitting the checkbox. And when you hit that checkbox, it'll jump you to the specification sheet for that particular product with that capability in that width. So it's a nice way to find our products based on the use, uh, rather than having to know everything about uh, the Gamelux perimeter series. The round fixture is making its way back into the lighting world. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we've added rotation capability into our round fixture so they can be aimed in the field to wherever you like. Our G-Beam portal fixture uh, is, uh, has obviously a very uh, dynamic design to it. It's a standard G-beam housing above, so it can be integrated into any ceiling system and even furniture systems if you like. But rather than having the white lens in the bottom of the fixture, we've replaced that with the backlit acrylic. These fixtures can be used as individuals or in continuous runs, in which case there would be a small gap between the acrylic panels uh, throughout the entire run, but those gaps are, um, are, are consistent throughout. We, off we offer 12 models for the G-Beam portal fixture, ranging from one inch deep to three inches deep coming out of the ceiling. Then we have inch and a half wide blocks and half inch wide blocks. Then we have the blocks where they are frosted on three sides and the blocks where they're frosted on five sides, so a total of 12 models there. We offer color changing in all of our LED fixtures. And if you need white, we would usually do that on a separate circuit. So you have RGB plus W, where the white is actually a full output uh, circuit. In addition to 13 standard finishes on all of our fixtures, we also offer wood grain finishes as well for a totally different kind of aesthetic in the product. The moral of the Gamelux story is total architectural integration. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day.